Have you ever thought about how a keyboard would look if we needed a key for each character? Funky, right? But how do modern keyboards solve this issue? Do they use different dimensions? <gasps> nah, they just use layers. Great, problem solved. But wait, what's a layer? Hello Digmates, I'm Dominique and today we'll learn how layers work on keyboards, how they can help enhance comfort and productivity, and how you can set them up on the Digma keyboards. So let's start with the essential. What are layers? Layers are sets of additional key bindings that you can access by pressing a specific key on your keyboard. For instance, when you press Shift, you activate a layer where all the letters are capitalized. This is even more obvious on your smartphone, where layers are actually displayed on the screen. On conventional keyboards, these layers come as default, and you can't change them. Programmable keyboards, like ours, let you customize them to your liking and even add more layers, opening a world possibilities. For example, thanks to layers, you can reduce hand movement and stretches by placing symbols, numbers, or difficult to reach keys closer to the home row. A great example of this is the arrow keys. Instead of moving your hand to reach them at the corner of the keyboard, you can place them on ESDF right under your fingertips. Another great benefit of programmable layers is having easy access to complex shortcuts like Control, Alt, Shift, S, which is someone's favorite hotkey, and it's also save for web on Photoshop. You can program those kinds of shortcuts on a layer and forget about contorting your hand so much that you'd end up like a T-Rex. This leads to the third advantage, which is creating specific layers for specific tasks. For instance, this video has been edited using a specific video editing layer. David has provided this layer willingly. Right, David? Right. He uses DaVinci Editor on a Mac, and as you can see, he has placed all of his shortcuts on his left side so that he can use his right hand for the mouse and work on things efficiently. And if you're thinking why our videos take so much time, well, it's actually because our scriptwriter spends more time gaming than writing. Oh, I was just testing the layers. Which, by the way, he does so on this FPS layer. Thanks to shift and control being one row up, he can be stealthy with less pinky stress. By the way, when he finally decides to work, he has a specific layer to navigate and edit text. These are just a few examples of dedicated layers, but if you want to see more, you can head over to our Discord and Reddit where you can ask our veteran digmates and staff specific questions about layers. And while you're at it, like and subscribe for more content. Now that we know how layers operate and what they can do for us, let's now look at how we can set a new layer on Basecore. First, select an empty layer. To avoid filling in all the keys from scratch, let's copy the layout from our base layer. Click on the gear icon on the menu and select Copy from Layers. Make the desired modifications and click Save. Once your layer is ready, you then need a way to get to it. In Basecore, there are three ways to access layers. Layer Lock, Layer Shift, and One-Shot Layers. With the Layer Lock, tapping the designated key will move you to the desired layer. It's important to assign a key in this new layer that takes you back to the previous layer, or else you'll be locked, like someone I know. Mm -hmm. If ever that happens, don't worry. Just unplug and replug the neuron and you'll be on your base layer again. To configure layer lock, just select a key, go to layers, and choose the desired layer under layer lock. Layer lock is great for layers that you're going to use for long periods of time, such as video editing or gaming. With the layer shift, you need to hold the key to activate the desired layer. Upon release, you'll go back to the previous layer. Think of it as shift on steroids. Instead of having capitalized letters, you can have whatever you want. To configure it, just select a key, go to layers, and choose the desired layer under layer shift. Although right now, there's a typo and it says layer switch. Hmm. This is great for shortcuts, symbols, or navigation keys. 
One-Shot Layers combine the benefits of Layer Lock and Layer Shift. If you tap the key, you'll move to the desired layer, but after one key press, you'll return to the previous layer. You can also hold the key to activate the layer and return to the previous layer when you release it. Finally, if you double tap the key, you'll be locked to the assigned layer. To go back to the previous layer, just tap the key again. To configure a one-shot layer, select a key, go to One Shot, and choose the desired layer under One Shot Layers. Now that you know how to set up your layers and access them, let me give you some advice on where to place the layer lock, layer shift, and one shot layer keys. Layer lock keys should be in spots you won't accidentally press. The low profile keys on the thumb cluster come in handy, but if you are no longer using keys like the original backspace, enter or control, those are great spots too. Layer shift and one shot layer keys should be in reachable spots. So I would recommend placing them on the thumb keys. For layer shift, you can even use dual function keys. That way you can have one function when you tap it, like space, enter or backspace, and another function when you hold it, like a modifier or layer shift key. But we'll leave that for another day. We know layers might seem a bit overwhelming at first, Nah, but don't worry. Once you start toying with them, you'll find it's fun, easy, and very rewarding. And if you don't trust us, go ahead and ask our community on Reddit or Discord. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to our awesome channel. See you in our next video and don't forget to share your layers with the community. You know, sharing is caring. Right, David? Right? Let's see you edit this video now that your hands are tied up. Hmm. <laughs>